Hi, and um, welcome everybody um, to the, sorry, I'm a, a little nervous here. Um, so first I'm going to thank everyone uh, around the world for your support. To us at Israel here um, in this time. Um, we are the Hebrew-speaking Three Principles community. We're part of the 3PGC, the global community, the Three Principles, that is committed to bring an understanding of Sydney Banks to the world. Um, today, Jenny and I will be um, presenting, introducing Dickin and Derek. Rachel Foreman will be translated in Hebrew. You can join that room. Um, Masha Lashenko is introducing in uh, translating in Russian. Um, I'm just going to read a short bio. Dickin Benninger received his doctorate in counseling psychology and has worked during his career as a licensed clinical psychologist. Dickin's entire career has focused on psychological well being. In 1986, he met Sydney Banks, who shared a profound new understanding of the human mind called the three principles that unifies our connection to a deeper intelligence called wisdom and our psychological nature. While living in Vermont, Dickin co-founded one of the three principles trainings, consulting and educating centers. Later Dickin served as a senior staff at Pransky Associates at Lacaner, Washington for 16 years where he developed and led corporates and university leadership training, team development, and cultural transformation. In, 19, in uh, 2012, Dickin founded his private practice, Three Principles Mentoring. He offers four-day immersion retreats for individuals, practitioners, Ooh, development, uh, adventure training programs. He enjoys leading groups, seminars in the U.S. and Europe. Dickin is a co-author of the book on the three principles called Coming Home, which is also translated into Hebrew. Overcoming the foundations of psychological well-being. Dickin has been happily married since 1969. He has two adult children, Four adored grandchildren. He enjoys people of all ages, photography, hiking, canoeing, and exploring art, culture, and new places in his travels. <laughs> Dick and, um, Derek Mason, which is here as well, has been involved in the three principles since 2017. Where he made a profound impact, which made a profound impact on his life. While serving a prison sentence, he was impacted by the truth and simplicity within the Sydney Banks literature, as well as love and trust of Jacqueline Hallows and the Beyond Recovery team, where he got a true glimpse into himself, enabling him to have a better understanding of others and see love and innocence in us all. And it is because of it, Derek was able to see the true potential within himself, which had only ever been limited by his own thinking. Derek was released from prison in August 2018, where he found the principle still played, his, played its part in impacting his life and which led him to reconnect with Beyond Recovery Team.
Just gave him the opportunity to be a guest speaker of the 3 pk conference and beyond recovery. Jenny Gittelband is a uh, trained psychotherapist and a coach that helps people get from stress and burnout to creative made career and life. I'm sorry I'm messing this up, Jenny. I love you. Um, I am a Three Principles practitioner, a life coach, and uh, I help people to get on the other side of mental health. Jenny, would you like to tell us a little about the logistics that are going to take us through today? Yeah. I want to thank also Rachel Foreman that is here with us. And she's the third board member of the Hebrew 3 pg the Hebrew uh, community. And she's a beautiful woman that lives in the United States and she's the coach of the three principles. And we're going to have our guests today, Derek and Dickon, to speak about the topic of peace of mind and common sense in the face of danger and fear. Uh, we are going to have 45 minutes of a talk and I think a deeper understanding of this possibility. And then we are going to have, I think, 10 minutes break. If we will um, need. And then we will have time for questions or sharings that you will be invited to write in the chat box, and we will be happy to communicate with you. Thank you, everybody, for coming in the Russian language, in Hebrew, in English, to support peace. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Dickon. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Marina. Derek, do you want me to jump in or would you like to start off? You're muted. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Let me let me just say first of all, my and prayers are going out to everyone who lives in the dark, lives under the dark, dark shadow of violence. And Please know that I love you deeply and wish nothing but the very best for you. I've always been interested from when I was very young in people who are in extremely difficult circumstance and somehow managed to rise to the occasion and find peace within and more importantly to find love and compassion in their hearts and live in those situations from that place I thought it was only possible compassion. for certain very exceptional people. But the good news is <laughs> it's available to every single one of us, this place within 
המקום הזה בפנים. שדברים בלתי... This is the good news. Uh, I, I like to think of it this way is some people call this space within. Some people call that space our heart. So we talk about going from our head to our heart. Some people call that space our soul. Some people call that space the the meeting ground where the human meets the divine where God flows through us and can lift our spirits and bring us love and peace in ways we didn't know possible that's the power of the divine so Sometimes I like to think of this space within us as the drop-in center that is open 24-7. And it's, there is no bouncer at the door. As a matter of fact, there's no door. And it's open. To anyone, it's all inclusive. There's no one that is denied entrance to this peace center, this heart center. But we cannot get into this center by thinking. We cannot think our way to peace of mind. We can't think our way to happiness. We cannot think our way to the common sense we need to be able to guide us through very dangerous and difficult situations. So there's one requirement for dropping into this center. Is that we, we need to temporarily let go of everything we're thinking. You know what that's called? It's very ordinary and we do it all the time. It's called being fully present. It's the easiest thing in the world where a thought away from being fully present at any moment. We can't think and be present at the same time. And... There have been a lot of names for what we enter or what's here when we let go of all of our thinking. What's still here? What's still here? Well, there's this, we can be aware of what's still here. It's this alive essence. That's why some people call it our soul. So it's, the, it's the doorway to the divine. Well, what do I mean by that? That when any of us, anyone in the world, fall out of all of our thinking temporarily, that in itself is a relief and feels better because we're letting go of all the thoughts that are creating fear and worry and upset. And judgments, and, and we're becoming free of that thinking temporarily. We're all free thinkers. I've learned over and over and over again that when I'm feeling afraid, that if I do more thinking, it feeds the fear with more fearful thinking. Innocently. It's very interesting. Most adults, when they feel upset or stressed, innocently do more thinking because they haven't been taught about the, 
לא לימדו אותם. Wisdom space, the heart. There are people all over the world. I was fortunate to find a, a, a teacher that every word was pointing us within, beyond our personal thinking, to this quiet that's always there within, to this peace that's always there within. that when we touch this space beyond our judgments, beyond our personal thinking, beyond our egos, it awakens something in our hearts. It opens the doorway to divine powers. We're all connected to the divine in this space. That's how it's possible for us when we're really upset to become focused in a loving way on someone. And at, in those moments, we don't experience fear, we experience love or compassion. It's built into everyone to be able to let go of fear and awaken love and bring that love into the world and to give it away to other people. Now, I have experienced directly what it is like to live in the shadow of war. One time I spent an extended period of time in a war zone terrified like I've never felt or experienced before in my life. Terrified. I woke up one night in the fetal position crying. I had machine guns in my chest. I had shooting going on all around me. I was, I was not a soldier, I was a civilian. Bombs going off all around me. I thought I would never see my wife and kids ever again. And then, by grace, I touched that center. I dropped out of my fearful thinking into this heart space. And I realized that I had a choice at any moment between holding on to and thinking fearful thoughts or letting them go and experiencing a warmth and a connection and finding even a little glimmer of that and bringing it to life by bringing warmth and kindness to someone else. And as we bring warmth and kindness to other people, it fans that flame within us. The spark, the divine spark gets stronger and stronger within us and flows through us more and more freely. This is an ancient teaching. It's at the heart of every religion. That in order to experience love, we need to let go of judgmental thoughts, our fearful thoughts. To return to the now, the present moment. To rest wide open and receptive to the divine forces of love and wisdom. My teacher, Sidney Banks, had, would say it's very, very simple. Look within, go beyond your ideas and concepts, beliefs, personal thinking. There's a quiet that's always there underneath all that thinking. It's always there. It's divine silence. Touch that 
Be aware of that space within of that quiet. Be aware of the feeling within that space because there's always, always a beautiful feeling in that space. Be aware of that feeling. And when you touch that feeling, bring it into the world. Bring it alive. Give it away. Help others. Smile. Be kind to others. Give a hand. Loving kindness. Be of service to others. Focus on bringing love into the world. It's the only way we can truly overcome fear. As you can experience love and fear at the same time. This is extremely practical. Extremely practical. There is not a situation where we're not capable of stepping into this drop-in center. Waking up at the heart, even in the midst of terror and, and violence going on all around us. The soul cannot be damaged by what happens outside of us. The heart, the true heart, the spiritual heart cannot be damaged by what happens outside of us. And it's alive and well within every single human being. I'm not trying to teach you anything here. I'm just reminding you of what has been part of the wisdom tradition, the wisdom teachings in every culture for centuries. This teaching is alive, and now it's coming forward more and more and more. And it's becoming, it has become available to everybody. So that's the, that's the, I wanted to share with you the only thing I found that's helped me to deal with the, the most difficult circumstances in my life is learning about this beautiful loving, uplifting, wise, drop-in centers. Derek? Rachel needs a short break. And if Masha can... Continue for one second. I will say something in Hebrew. I will start in English and translate into Hebrew. Rachel will have a, a break. Thank you. You're beautiful. Mm -hmm. We we're talking about presence and wow. Hebrew. Thank you for that, Dickens. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Um, once again, well, firstly, I want to say thank you, everyone, for turning up and showing up in this space and looking in this direction. And the second, even the those, second, um, the like, circumstances or the reason why we. The Sorry? second, Derek. We have two seconds break before we will introduce you, and you will continue. Oh, oh. I will give Rachel five minute break, and I will speak in English, translate to Hebrew and Masha will translate to Russian, and then we will continue. Thank you so much. I was hearing you, Dickon, about presence, and there are two words in Hebrew for presence. I was hearing that Dickon spoke about the presence. There are two words in Hebrew, לנוכחות. אחת, נוכחות, כמו שאנחנו כותבים אותה, נוח פלוס כוח. It's 
to be in ease plus having power. It's in one, two words, that means presence, ease and power. And the other word for presence is Havaya, to be in presence. And if we switch one letter from being in Havaya, is being in the name of God. So dropping into the, the divine, dropping in ease in a powerful way is an ancient, ancient understanding. Thank you so much. I'll say in the Hebrew that the word of the Dickens is talking about it until now. It reminds us of the opportunity to be in the heart and in the heart. Together with the opportunity to hold the power, to hold the power. Or to be in love. שאם אנחנו לוקחים את הייעוד ומעבירים אותה קצת מקום, אנחנו בעצם מאפשרים לנו להיות בתוך שם השם, כן? בתוך האלוהים. וזאת ההזמנה של דיקן. Thank you so much. It is so simple when we just understand behind the words. And we can just feel the invitation that is in front of us. Let me talk in English. האפשרות להיות מוזמנים למקום הזה, תמיד נמצאת שם. גם another thing that came up is that in the word presence mean combines inside of itself in the name of God. The past, the present, and the future, which all there is, is the divine. Yeah. In the now. Betocha vaya, yashlanu et ahava, et ahove, vet ma she shari, kshanachnu behavaya. Rachel, you okay? Thank you so much. Derek, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jenny. That was so beautiful. That was so beautiful. Thank you, Nick. It brought me the presence, it just got me so present. And to know that that's where all the beauty is, that's the, that's the divinity. שששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששששש
שלא הייתי מודע לו. ואני חשבתי שאני מיוחד. לא הייתי במלחמה. או במקום מפחיד כמו שדיקן היה. I know feelings of deep fear. And I know the direction I used to look when I was faced with those feelings. I didn't believe there was anything else in me, any other answer. I think the title of this, 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 this talk just says it so well, that peace of mind. השלווה הזאת, השלווה הזאת, השלווה הזאת, כאילו כל הזמן, לפעמים זה נראה נורא, לי אישית, ברגע שראיתי, הרגשתי את לא משנה באיזה מצב אנחנו נמצאים, or what we expect of the future, no, if we can glimpse the divine, the now, what's available to us now, that's where it all happens. It took me for me to glimpse it once, not even in its full glory, just a little glimpse, to realize my circumstances don't have to denote who I am or how I show up. seeing a piece of that divinity. And I've always had it. It's always been in me. And the more I see it in me, the more I can see it in other people. Even through their actions. And just feeling that and knowing that. It's something that's getting, trying to keep me pointed to the present. Because it's so hard, it's so easy it's to get caught up in the past and what the future might look like, judging from the past. But I'm just trying to stay present in every moment. I stay present now, that's the job done for now. It's the next moment. Can I stay present in the next moment? Can I tune into that divinity? And I love when it's like we, it's something that I learn or a teachings, but it's something that I am, something that I've always been. Feeling it and knowing it and being it, that's it for me. And like I said, certain circumstances, I'm just so glad there's so much love in this room. אני כל כך שמח שיש כל כך בחדר הזה, אני מרגיש את זה. אני, זו מילה שפתחתי חיסה בעבר, אבל היום אני כן. יש אנשים בעולם. ואין אף אחד יוצא דופן. I thought love had re-rooted or devoided from my direction. I've come to realize I am it. We all are it. No exceptions. אני הגעתי למסקנה שאין יוצאים מהכלל. When we drop into that space, that peace of mind, that divinity, that presence, that now, all we feel is that love. כל מה שאנחנו מרגישים זה אהבה. All we become is that love. כל מה שאנחנו נהיים זה אהבה. All the answers that we've always ever been looking for. לפחות הם דרך אהבה. Come from that space of love. So often I'll get caught up in the confusion. הרבה פעמים הייתי נתפס ב... Of what I thought I had to do or what other people thought I had to do. שאני צריך לעשות או שזה לא ככה. When we tune into that novel word and that type of that common sense. It's common because we've all got it. In the moment. In the now. 
בשבילי אני מצאתי שרק להסתכל על זה כבר עוזר. אלוהות, אני צריכה לחזור לפעמים אני מסתכל וזה הכל חשוך ואני לא יכול לראות שום דבר. אבל אני ממשיך להסתכל. יש כאילו אני... לא מסתכלתי בכל דרכים. ואז אני מסתכל מה שזה יכול למצוא את המקום הזה. אבל בזמן של בלבול, כשלא מסתכלים על זה, אני יודע שאני פשוט מבין שאני לא חושבת שלי. or what we think we have to do, or what we think other people have to do. It all starts with us, with me. I didn't even know what I could bring to this, this talk here. Because I, I've said, I'll think it into my head thinking, I've never experienced, I've never been in certain situations. But that's taking me away from myself again. From I got on the call before you guys even turned up. We was talk, they were talking about how the call was going to go. Just the feeling of love just came on me. Reminded me of who I was. And reminded me of what I can bring to this. Just by showing up from that space. It might be a point, a timely reminder for somebody. Just to know that that drop in space is always there for them. ואני יכול אז להזכיר לאחרים שהמקום הזה נמצא. לפעמים אני לא רואה את זה. לפעמים אנחנו רוצים לעקוב אחרי מישהו אחר. אבל כשאנחנו רואים מה שקורה אצלנו בפנים, אנחנו רואים אחרי אחרים. אנחנו מוצאים את המקום הזה שוב. והשינוי הזה, אנחנו מוצאים את המקום הזה מההתחברות למקום הזה בפנים. מה שאנחנו חושבים שאנחנו רוצים... אני חושב שיש לי את זה, אני חושב שזה מעבר למה שאני חושב. זה, זה מה שאנחנו מאמינים, זה מה שאנחנו מאמינים. And to other people, you might say, oh, that's mundane, or okay, it's a big deal, so you work with them, or big deal, you do this. But to me, that stuff beyond my wildest dreams, answers that come from nowhere. It look like the answers that I previously thought were possible. Or the answer is, are we in our school? We all have that. There's not no exception. <inaudible> that touches us all. That blesses <inaudible> us all. <inaudible> that space that we can drop into at any time. <inaudible> the feeling. When you have that feeling and it <inaudible> holds you. <inaudible> You know you're in that space. You know that space is possible under any circumstances. And that's, for me, that is where the strength comes. When we get taken out of our bandwidths, when we get taken out of our little, the zones, what we're used to, when we get taken out of that, let's see what we can see new. I've always looked to the old. When we get taken out of that usual, our comforts, it's not nice. But how do we get back to that feeling? 
or knowing anything outside of us, any circumstances, any situation, doesn't have to reflect how we are inside. We can be the peace in the storm. We can be the calm. Speak from a space of love. Speak from a place of divinity. We just have to see it in ourselves. See it in ourselves. We feel it in ourselves. We admit it to others. I never thought I could have been not a beacon, but I never thought I could be somebody that could talk and somebody hears something and it makes them feel lighter or gives them a different perspective on life. Because like Dickin alluded to, we're all connected, every single one of us on this planet, through that divinity. Through that peace, that's who we are. The answers we look for are all within us. We take care of ourselves in that moment. This understanding is something that has affected me on all different levels of my life. And it the people around me as well. And that's not in the way that I would have thought it would have worked. The strength, the power, the love. That I can see I'm capable of. I can see it in every single one of you. Take it, you're here following a feeling. That same feeling you're following is in me. It guides me. When we get present, in that state, it will guide all of us. We're all going to the same place, but it just happens to look different for all of us. But we can all take the same route there. No exceptions. We're all blessed and born with this. The more we see how much we can do as individuals when we get settled and we get calm, and we draw for our common sense and we understand our divinity and we stay present in every moment every moment is new so I try to bless every moment with a new thought presence Let me wrap up with others. Love. The way people have potential to show up is far more greater than anybody ever could imagine. Whatever, whatever we think our potential is, it's always just a big fervor. That never ends. That's infinite. And we understand our love in the moment. We can truly start to see how our divinity, our love, can spread to everybody, no exceptions. So again, I just want to thank everyone for showing up and giving me this chance to share a little, just a little bit about what I've seen about myself and the truth in that is the truth what lies within us all.
Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Derek. I will give another small break to Rachel and then we will have a break. Okay. Uh, 10 minutes. Okay. And, so and again, just hearing you and the word peace of mind means in Hebrew, Oroga. And the word moment means Rega. So the word moment is included in the word peace of mind. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you for the simplicity. We will take uh, 15 minutes break yeah. or 10 is enough. What do you think? 10 is enough. Yeah. Okay. We will take 10 minutes break. We will come back at 6.05 for questions and sharings. And if you have questions, of how, what, we will be very, very happy to hear. Thank you guys. Thank you, everyone. Coming back. So slowly, we will be very, very happy to read your questions. You can uh, write it in Russian. You can write it in Hebrew. We'll write it in English, and slowly, me and Yael, we will present the questions to our guests. You can share things that you found reasonable, logical for you, questions that you have.
I will ask. I have a question. Yes, we share now. So the first question I heard in the last few days is how I'm really overwhelmed yes, or in a despair. How do I go to this present moment, to this, to this peace of mind? Thank you. Thank, thank you for your question. It's really a good question, Jenny. What about when I'm feeling overwhelmed, despairing? How is it possible to be present? It's strange to discover that it's harder to keep thinking about something that, in a way that creates more stress, more overwhelm than it is to be present, which takes no energy, no activity. No effort. No one can do presence. We can only be presence. No, there are lots and lots of hints in wisdom teaching. Lots of hints. Like... Listen, I've worked with people. Listening is a metaphor for being fully present because you can't think and listen at the same time. And I've worked with people who are in despair and overwhelmed. And they say, just listen to me for one minute. And they go, okay. See, they, they've never been... That's a hint. Listening is a hint on walking around in a state of listening. We can't listen and think at the same time. Here's another hint. Open your eyes and look around. Be aware of what's around you. You can't be thinking and be aware of what's around you. I look out my window, I see a car, I see my computer, I see my books. I can't see those things while I'm thinking. That's another hint. Look up. Look around. Stop focusing on what you're thinking about. Stop focusing. Another hint. Stop focusing on anything that's already happened. Stop thinking about the past. If you think about the past, that thinking most often creates upset. We can't find that peace of mind. Thinking about the past. There's another hint. Don't worry about the future because you have no idea what's going to happen in the future. And a, a lot of the thinking about the future we do creates anxiety. So that's a hint. It's It's been given by teachers for centuries. 
Don't think about the past. Don't think about the future. One more hint. There's ton, there are many, many hints. One more hint. Just rest. If you feel overwhelmed, just rest feeling overwhelmed. Just rest your mind. Relax your mind. Rest. If you're feeling fearful, just rest in fear. Don't try and fix it, stop it, change it. There's nothing wrong with it. Just rest. Rest more and more deeply with what is as it is. Just rest. Just rest. Nothing to figure out. Nothing to think about. Just rest. Just be. That's a hint. And at some point, you'll find for yourself what it is to be fully present, to let go of everything you're thinking, everything, just for a moment. Just for a moment, just for a moment, be at peace, rest. Derek would like to be unmuted so he can say something here. Yeah, thank you for that, Kim. Thank you for that question, Jenny. And I love the way you just said that as well, Dickin. When no, you can just be at peace. And to just be at peace in the present. We sort of think that that, that might indicate if we're overwhelmed or and we're at peace with it, then that could tell us that we don't care. Or we don't care about what's going on. So we try to dig <laughs> more into it to show ourselves that we care. But if that just produces more feeling of overwhelm, then we just know that that's not leading us to the peace of mind. So to find some form of peace within that space. Because a lot of the time we always look outwardly. And we can find a solution from looking into it. And if we don't find a solution, or if we don't want to, if we can't find a solution, or we're told not to look for a solution, it's like we're told we don't care, or we feel we don't care. If we follow our feelings, and just know that the more we settle and get into that peace of mind state, that's where the answers come from. It doesn't come from that overwhelmed feeling. And that they can say it's okay. So we will follow our thinking sometimes. And that leads to a feeling of overwhelm. But if we know that no answers are going to come from that space, just like we're here now, whatever's going on outside of the walls of wherever you are now, what's ever going outside of the walls, what's going on for me, that's outside there for now. I'm here in this space. And what's going on out there is still going to be going on. And I still have care. I have a bit more care for myself. So if I don't like those feelings of overwhelm, then I can find peace. And the answers will come from that peace. Not getting involved in the content. I'd like to add that there is nothing wrong with any feeling you have. We're, we're not interested in having you feel bad about what you're feeling or try and feel peaceful or try and be happy. Or, we're not saying that at all. The paradox is when you don't 
resist anything you're feeling, your mind's at rest. When you don't judge what you're feeling, your mind's at peace. If you're sad, you'd be sad. But I've seen over and again and with me and with people I'm talking to, we can have any feeling and at any moment we're either present to that feeling or we're thinking while we're in that feeling. Suffering is created when we're thinking, when we feel fearful, sad, hurt, angry. Psychological suffering is created when we think while we're feeling those things. If you feel any of those feelings without thinking, you're at peace with those feelings. You're not trying to get anywhere. You already are perfect as you are in this moment, no matter what you're feeling. We think we can judge and say, I shouldn't feel this. I, I don't want to feel this. And that thinking makes us suffer. You see, you see how that works? It's okay to have any feeling. With understanding, you're able to have any feeling and it'll keep flowing because you're present. You're not adding more thinking to it. You're free. Free to be yourself. Free to have any feeling. It's a different way of understanding what peace is. It's a different way of understanding that there's a love that's unconditional. It embraces everything you're feeling. Unconditional love. Everything is welcome to flow through. I have all kinds of thoughts and feelings they flow through. Babies have all kinds of feelings that flow through them. They don't stop and analyze and think and try and figure out. They don't judge. They just allow it to flow. That's well-being. That's a peace of mind that doesn't fight, judge, and struggle against what you're experiencing. Freedom. Any other questions you've been hearing, Jenny? That was wonderful to hear what you've been hearing, what people have been asking you. I will add, second, I will add just the Hebrew to you and uh, Eric, your invitation to, to rest. In order to be in more peaceful space, the word comfortable, noach, which was connected to being present, mm -hmm. and the word to rest, la noach, it, it's based on the same root. Yeah, to be in comfort, to be in ease. Yeah. If you want to be in ease, you need to rest. So thank you, Dikan, again. And to be in peace, uh, inside of peace, Shalom. There is the word Shalem, whole. It means that everything is included in peace. Mm. Wow. Shalom. Divine peace, divine happiness, divine love includes everything. 
all emotions, everything. 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 Shalom haolami And that, that points as well to what you're saying, Dickin, is when, when we accept everything is acceptable and everything is okay. I call, I call, yes. Uh, uh, yes. We can sort of see that there's not a struggle that we have to struggle through it. We just have to become at peace with it. And the answers will come through that rather than thinking we have to struggle through it or get rid of it because we're not meant to be experiencing it. It's just like all part of the flow. And I love the way you break down the words, Jenny. Because when you break them down and connect them, I can see the connection behind the words, which is just so beautiful. It just shows it's a, it's a bigger connection that we're all connected to. Even through the language and the words that we use. When we understand that the feelings that we feel are just passing through us. And there's an acceptance. There's not a judgment like Dickens said. There's not a guilt. There's not a, I have to be thinking a certain way in order to show that I'm a good person or feeling everything's open to us. And when we're at peace with that, then we can find it a lot more comfortable, the comfort. That we're all looking for. With no work to be done. No one to be changed. Just get a deeper glimpse at ourselves and how okay we are. It's like we're taking things off the list of what makes me not okay. If I know I can be in that feeling, but yet I'm okay, then that's off the list. That's that's a feeling I can I can live with. Because it's not going to be as detrimental or as consequential as when I thought it was something I had to get rid of. But to just be at peace and in comfort with what the situation is around us. We will feel everything we need to feel. For everybody involved, no exception. There was a question here. So um, there is a question here. Um, there were two questions, so I'll read one first. One, um, someone is saying, thank you very much for the space and ability. And I cannot pronounce that. It seems I get answers to many difficult questions I have just by being in the same virtual space with you guys. Mm. So this was a this was the meaning behind this space. Um, when I hear virtual, I have, have so many um, things follow that because I feel that when we're all here together, everything collapses and we're all here together. I don't have a screen in front of me. I have a whole world right here. Um, another question, a question that was here. Um, Maybe that's a direct question for Jenny and I, but I'm not sure. Um, I want to send my support and love in these sad times to you all. Is there any support for the Palestinian community too? Do you know? I want to I know that there is. Um, And I think that this conversation and uh, Dickin and Derek, you can um, share more about this, but sending love to all. I think this is what this whole conversation was about. That there are no exceptions. There are no exceptions. 
וזה כולל את כולם. There are beautiful conversations in all languages, in all religions, in all religions. I heard another message that was from the chat. Seems I was able to touch, feel my deep inner being. It's wonderful. It is space, it is peace and relief for many. Mm. Sorry, my tiredness, maybe. For many vouchers, maybe, I had for the last 10 days. The, the message is universal. That any one of us anywhere in the world can become a peacemaker. How do we do that? First, we have to find peace within. And then when we touch that space, automatically we begin to access compassion and kindness. And we bring that to the people around us. We're bringing more, literally, we are bringing more peace and love into the world. That's how the world will change. That's how communities that were violent and filled with violence changed because people just like you and me, one at a time, began to have the courage to let go of fearful thinking. And judgments and drop into this space and access this in this well of being. Access in this well of being right where we stand, the peace and the love, and to bring literally bring that forward. I just spent four, four days in a row with a friend who was suffering terribly from several enormous losses all at one time. And she was grieving, and she was hurt, and she was angry. How can I help someone like that? A universal prescription from in wisdom teaching. Drop beyond your thinking to the quiet within and in that quiet, there's a feeling of inclusion, of openness. Yes. When we're holding thoughts, it holds our energy. When we are open and receptive, the energy of the universe flows through us. That divine energy flows through us. And that feeling is a nice feeling. And we bring that to other people. So all I could do with my friend, it wasn't what I said to her that was important other than I love you as you are. I love you as you are. Other than that, what was helpful was just being in a peaceful, loving presence. So we're back to presence. Because in presence, in that quiet, in that feeling, it's filled with divine wisdom. It's filled with what will help you know what to say and do in any situation. So I told my daughter when she was 16, two things I've learned, or two things I want you to learn, two things I want every client I have to learn, two things I want people in the whole world to learn. Number one, we're living 
אנחנו חיים. And a thought created feeling. ו... And if you realize that, you'll see a lot of the thinking you do that we get caught up in creates fear, upset, tension, stress. And if you really realize that that's thinking you're holding, you let go of it. So I said, that's one thing I want you to learn, is that you're a free thinker. You can drop thoughts that create tension, stress, and upset and come back to the now. The second thing I want you to learn is when you let go of everything you're thinking and find that quiet within, there's always a nice feeling in that quiet. And when you're in that quiet, nice feeling, you'll have all the common sense you need to deal with any horrific situation you find yourself in. That's where you find it. Derek talked about that. You'll find all the answers. You drop into this, drop in center of quiet and feeling that embraces everything, that feeling. And then not from your intellect, but from your heart, you will be guided. You just know what to do and how to do it. It's called common sense. <coughs> I, love that, I, love. You know, I love those messages, Yael and Jenny, because it just goes to show exactly what we're talking about. Uh, we have to be open and create this space. And we're fully open to creating this space. And those barriers of religion, color, any, any other barrier we can think of, they just fall away. It's such a universal human, a human thing, a love thing. If you've got potential and capacity to love, then you've got capacity to understand what I'm saying and feel what I'm saying and see it for yourself. And even in those messages where I said people have got answers, I've got answers. I wasn't speaking to anything in particular, but we all have our answers for ourselves. We all have that space within us to guide us to exactly where we need to be. And even work with our fellow human, it will guide me as to what, if I drop into that space, as to what's needed for this space. And if, they, if the person's open, they will take what they want to take from them. And they will create that. And they will see the answers for themselves. So just like Dickens said, the more you hold on to that thinking or you hold on to them barriers, you could think we're in a nice space, but it's got barriers. It's just not as nice as it could be. When you let go of those barriers, you then see the infinite nature of our connection, our connected potential. And it's where we came from. We came from a place of connection. And we put barriers as to why we're not connected. But this, what we're talking about here, is, is universal. It fits everybody. We've all got that love in us. We've all got the ability to see something, what's right for us in the moment. And I love the for you, Dickie, that said that courage. To display that courage. Not courageously outwardly. All my life I was doing courageous things outwardly, what I thought would courage to look inside. Courage to lean up against the things that I thought were my barriers. And they'll be different to everybody else's. But when I find that courage, I can have that space. Everything falls away. And it's in that space. And I love what you said as well, Yard. I bought out of that idea a long time ago that this is virtual and we're all, all over the world. Now, somewhere, we are all gathered together, connected in that space that we talk of. And that's where we live our lives. That's where we find our answers. And that's where we find our strength. When we get taken out of that bandwidth, and we can still find that space. Hmm. And outside our normal bandwidth, it's so foggy, it's so dark, it's so unfamiliar, it's so cold, it's so everything we're not used to. We can still find this space of warmth and love. And that's what we use as a beacon of strength for others, by just finding ourselves.
it's capable. It's, it's, it's capable. All of us is capable. Not one of us is stronger than the other. Not one of us is wiser than the other. Not one of us was given more common sense than the other. We can all feel it. And more importantly, we can all share it. As well, we see it in ourselves. And understand that we are all we are okay. And this is what comes for me. By definition, I know that my life, if I'm okay, and I really believe that I'm okay, then I truly believe that everybody else has got the capacity to be okay. But they have to see that for themselves. They know it. Because we all know it. Like I think you said earlier, the teachings, this is something that's been in me from a long time. From I was born, we was all born with it. When you get shown it, and you see it, and you feel it, and you know it. The truth is there for all of us. So we've all got that courage. To search that little bit deeper. As, as, uh, you know, I used to say it before, just searching, just past what I think I know. There's always something past what I think I know. What I do know is that it's filled with love. And it emanates from me. And I receive it from others. That space before thought, that presence, that real presence. I can line up and look at everything. And see that it's for me. No matter what it looks like. I know that it's okay. Because I always was and I always will be okay. I think a powerful way you can just speak and people just open themselves up for, to get into that space and see what they see for themselves. It's literally a miracle. It's literally a miracle. And when we're talking about divinity, why, not, why, why are miracles possible? You were saying we're okay. And in Hebrew, when somebody asks you if you want if you're okay, the word is beseda. Means okay. Just okay is inside of the order. Mm -hmm. Okay? So so there is, we cannot be outside of the order of the nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> metaphors? Oh, go ahead, Jenny, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then we will have the last question for today. Okay. I, I, I just love metaphors. <laughs> Each human being is a wave on the ocean, and God is the ocean. Well, uh, and okay. so when we talk about so falling I'm... out of thought, Let, we fall out of I'm... thinking we're only a little wave or a turbulent wave. And we go a little bit deeper in the ocean, and it's the peace of God. The, the quiet. We're not trying to stop the waves. We're not judging the waves. The ocean doesn't care that there's waves. A friend of mine, good friends, who had three young kids, and I was very close to these kids. They called me uncle. And they call me one night and say their five-year-old son 
got out of the car when they got home, was crossing the street and was hit by a car and killed. And I was flooded with grief. Just flooded with grief. And they said, can you come be with us? And I said, of course. And uh, uh, I ran out and jumped in the car and drove four hours. And I'm driving. And I am so caught up in my thinking, it's unbelievable. Thinking about what happened, about what I could do, how I could help them, what this meant what they must be going through. I couldn't stop thinking. And I realized I'm driving like this. And I realized I don't want to bring this to them. Dickin. Drop the thoughts, rest. Tap into a deeper resource. Be uplifted by spirit and divine presence and bring that to them. So for days I was with my friends and I up here in my head, I never knew what to say or do. I drop into this quiet feeling and just bring that to them. Loving presence. At the end of our time together, they could not stop thanking me, and I didn't feel like I had done anything really other than just be present. But that's the best we can offer people who are suffering. It's not in the words, it's in the feeling. We have one job always in the face of difficulty, adversity, drop into the spirit, fill up that quiet and that feeling, and bring it to others as loving presence. And then you'll know what to do. It's built into that. You'll know what to do. My mother dies, I grieve, and I drop in. Right away, right away, right away. I sat down. I just filled up with gratitude and love for my mother and sent it to her. Derek and I have, and Jenny have been pointing you for this most beautiful connection that we always already have with God. And it's a loving God and a wise God one that will uplift and guide us if we're willing to let go of our little thinking, our little self. And drop into the ocean, the divine ocean, and be uplifted, be guided. I want my love to become more and more inclusive, so it includes everything and everybody, the trees, the animals, the environment. People everywhere. That's how we can help change the world. Bring more and more peace and love into the world from within. Allow it to flow through us and touch the lives of others. Yes, and the question will be how not to get affected by someone else's fearful, harmful thinking. Mm -hmm. Sarah, jump in, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you have a lot to say about this. 
Yeah, so I love that last answer as well. You know, that um, analogy you gave is beautiful, man. But I just, it starts with presence and it ends with presence. Uh, sometimes we don't even know how we're touching somebody else. And it's above our pay grade. We just know that in the presence, we're being provided the right answers. That's all that counts. That's all that counts. Mm -hmm. so when when we get caught up in other people's fearful thinking, this is where I've seen this understanding to have an amazing how it works truly beyond the words. Because a lot of the time I'm around some people who got fearful thinking or had fearful thinking, and I used to think it was sort of my job to buy into it and. Agree and appease, or just to listen along and agree certain times. But I know that if I'm present, I can also get caught up in a conversation. Like Dicky said, he was driving and he was caught up in his thinking and he had to get present to sort of realize what was needed in that situation. So a lot of the time, when we get present in the company of others, I can see that. Sometimes just not to buy into the talk, just not to buy into it. And he also, if you're sorry, in a clear state of mind, and you're not buying into it, not that, that can have an effect on the other person. Because by nature, when we converse, we like to buy into each other's argument. It's something that we sort of do. And cajole each other along. But in full presence, what comes to us comes to us. And even if it's just not to say anything, and take it from yourself rather than take other people's fears and other people's thoughts and that is again that is the opposite to what we're talking about being present having your own answers seeing where your fears lie seeing if you can get present with those my fears are numerous enough already for me to take on other people's fears and then work with those. So if I'm present, and that's something I've learned as well, when I'm present, being present, it's not my job to explain to somebody why they shouldn't be fearful or why they should just try to get present. I can take care of myself, so I try to be present. Well, if I can be present enough, it can have some sort of effect on the person or the people around me. I think it was, I used to get caught up in it so often, and I read a quote from Sid, where he said something along, along the lines of, whenever you're at that point and you're trying to convince somebody of the principles, and you're like to in and fro in, then already you've lost the principles. It's just to be grounded in your own presence. And then that fearful thinking might not show up to you as fearful as you previously thought. And you just knowing that in yourself can have an effect on a person talking the fearful talks. And that's another reason why I was going to allude to it earlier, why I don't really get into the news and all of that stuff, because it's easy to follow other people's fears. <laughs> And you have to do is just stay present. And if you really want to get really present, most people's fears will be centered on the past or the future. The nature of the word present. And you give yourself that present. Or being in the moment. I know sometimes that's not easy. But we have to be courageous in ourselves and trust in ourselves and what we know. That's beautiful, Derek. Beautiful. <laughs> I like to just add, sometimes I have big reactions to other people. And 
it took me a long time to understand that my reactivity, my my uh, upset, my uh, bother, uh, my impatience, my it's just my own thinking kicking in and it's not wrong or bad because it happens so quickly those feelings I used to hate and now I see them as my best friends upset it's just an invitation to drop in it's a loving, kind invitation. One time I, I was starting to cross the street and I didn't look one way and a car was coming. And my wife grabbed me and pulled me back and I went, oh, thank you. Now I see my hurt, my anger, my sadness, my upset, my anxiety, my worry, my anger. My rage, my despair, our friends pulling me back to the now. They're helpful when you understand them and their nature. God designed this whole human system. So feeling this way is not wrong or bad. If it's understood, it doesn't mean anything about the other person. It's an invitation to drop back into your peaceful center. And as Derek says, sometimes you just have to keep your mouth shut and, and not say something while you're in that reaction and wait until you can then listen and talk from that deeper space. But it's normal to have thoughts come in. We all do. And sometimes they come in and they immediately create a feeling. That's not a problem. If you don't hold on to that thought and it flows through you so that wisdom can still guide you. So every feeling is love in disguise if you understand the nature of feelings your worst feelings are the biggest and loudest it's like an alarm clock going off to wake you back up to the now it's not bad or wrong to feel that way with understanding though it, it's an invitation to have the courage to drop everything you're thinking and come home come back Come, drop in whatever however you want to think about it. that's powerful really powerful and the more you understand that the less reactive you will be toward people You know, my teacher, Sidney Banks, who had this enlightenment experience, he called the drop-in center the ultimate answer. It was in his last talk, he gave public talk before he died. The most down-to-earth, beautiful, spiritual person. And his parting thoughts is dying wishes for us is to realize that beyond our thinking there's a quiet and in that quiet there's a feeling and in that feeling there's a knowing a wisdom a common sense so anytime you feel tension stress or upset that's where you'll find the answer that's what derek started off with today the answers are found in that space beyond our thinking. You can't think your way to the answers of wisdom. You can just get out of the way and be open and receptive to the divine flow, the force, the power, 
of divine love, divine wisdom. They come from within when we're out of the way. Thank you, Dickon. Those for us today. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you, Masha. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, our beautiful helper, Kate. Laura. Thank you, beautiful, beautiful people for coming and being together. Being in, in a hopeful state. We will continue in the next two days. God bless. God bless. Thank you. So much love. I'm on Ava. You guys, if you want, you can send hearts, <laughs> send yourself, <laughs> open your microphone to say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye so much for so much love chat today. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was just like when you went home. <laughs> just this lovely. Yes. Mm. Mm. That's not correct. So, station. Hi, everybody. Uh, is. Thank you. Peace and quiet. Peace, love. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Thank you, Masha. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Jenny, Yale, everyone else. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah, for being here. My pleasure. Thank you all. This was amazing.